Welcome back to Business Office Specialist. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to create simple formulas and basic functions in Google Sheets. To help us with this assignment, we're going to use a pre-built workbook called Basic Formulas. If you're taking my Canvas course, there's a link to that in the instructions. Otherwise, you can find the link at the bottom of the description for this video. So I'm going to come up and click on that link. And as with all of our other assignments, we're going to want to move this new workbook into our boss folder so that we can find it more easily and then change the title to remove that copy of text so that it just says basic formulas. So the purpose of formulas and functions in Google Sheets is to allow us to calculate and analyze large sets of data very easily and display them in a way that makes them easy enough to understand that we can use them to make better management decisions. So in this assignment, we're going to be looking at four different scenarios that could exist in the business world and look at how creating these formulas and functions can help us to understand the information in these scenarios better. At the end of each scenario, after you've done some calculations, you'll be asked a few questions that management might really ask in a real world scenario. And you can see how the information that you've calculated helps you to answer those questions much easier. Now in each of these scenarios, I've color coordinated a few of the cells for you to help you understand the types of information that I'm looking for in those cells. Any cells that have a fill color in gray, like this one here, those are cells where we are going to be recording formulas. A formula is a simple math equation that we set up so that Google Sheets will calculate it for us. So for example, in these cells, we are looking at a budget for a department in a business. If you were the manager of a department inside of a company and were receiving a budget, you would one of the first things you'd want to know is how that budget changed from the prior year so that you know how to plan accordingly. So here we have the budgets for a few categories in your department from last year and the changes that are being made to them this year. Our calculation we're going to do here as a formula should look at calculating the difference between last year and this year. What the manager would like to have happen is if this year's budget is greater than last year's budget, we want to show a positive number here so that he knows it's an increase to his budget. If the budget for it this year is less than last year, then we want to have a negative number. Now, when we think about these math equations, and we're writing formulas, we first have to stop and think about what kind of math are we using here. So in this scenario, we are looking to record or calculate the change between last year's budget and this year's budget. What kind of math would we use? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Well, when we're looking for any kind of a difference or change, those are always key words that indicate subtraction. So we're going to be subtracting one year from the next. And we want to make sure that if this year is higher, it's positive, and this year's lower, it's negative. Well, in this case, this year's budget for salaries is 92,500, and last year's was 95,000. So this year is going to be smaller, which means that our calculation should be a negative number. Now, if we want it to be a negative number, how would we calculate that? Would the larger number go first, or would the smaller number go first? The smaller number would go first if we wanted it to be negative. So I'm going to write 92,500 minus 95,000. Now, when I press enter to save what I've recorded into this cell, you'll see that absolutely nothing happens. And that's because there are two different ways to enter information into a cell. The default for Google Sheets and most spreadsheet softwares, when you type information into a cell, is to include it as what's called a label. A label simply looks at each character typed into a cell as a character, as text. And so Google Sheets doesn't see this as 92,500 minus 95,000. It sees it as 92500-95000. It sees characters. If we wanted to calculate instead, we have to ask it politely if it would calculate for us. We do that 
by putting an equal sign in front of our calculation. So anytime we use formulas or functions, we always need to begin with an equal sign. So I'm going to change the text to be an equal sign. Now, if I put my mouse on top of this cell and make it my active cell and then begin typing, it's going to overwrite everything I created and start over. If I just want to edit text in a cell in a spreadsheet, there are two ways you can do this. I could double click on the cell and then it opens it up for editing again. And then I could come in and add the equal sign on the front of it if I wanted to. And it becomes a calculation and you can see that the text changed its style because now it is a calculation. The other way that I could change the text is to click on the cell and then come up here to the very top to what is called a formula bar. The formula bar is right above the column letters, kind of like an address bar in a web browser like Google Chrome. The formula bar allows you to see the formula information instead of just the answer. So you can see now that I've put the equal sign in front of this cell, the cell itself displays the answer to my calculation. It doesn't show the formula anymore. If I want to see the formula and understand what I've typed to create that number, then I have to click on the cell and look at the formula bar at the top. And it will show me that that 2,500 is created by typing equals 92,500 minus 95,000. So those are the two places you can change text inside of a cell without having to replace the text and start over. You can double click on the cell or click on the formula bar. Now that we've created the calculation, is it a negative number like we thought it would be? From a first glance, it may seem like it's not. It may seem positive, but it does have those parentheses around them on both sides. That is because this is written in an accounting format. In an accounting format, negatives are always displayed in parentheses instead of having a dash in front of them. So this is actually, in fact, a negative number. Now, our formula works perfectly fine right now, but there's one problem with it. What would happen if the manager was concerned about his reduction in budget, went back to his boss, and his supervisor agreed to increase his, his budget for salaries for this year an extra $1,000. If I come in and change the 92000 to be 93000 watch what happens to the formula that we created in the change column. You can see when I save this, nothing happened to the change column because the the formula in the change column is not connected to my cell C6 where the salary was changed. Instead, the formula uses a number that is typed into that. We call that a hard-coded number. When you hard-code a number in or simply type the number into it, that means that any time I change the numbers in the cell, I have to go back and change the number in the formula as well. So I would have to come in here and change it to 93,500. Now that's not so bad if it's only one cell, but the problem is when you get a large spreadsheet, it's easy to lose track of all the different cells where that number was and change them all. So we want to make this as simple as we can. What we're going to do instead is replace each of those numbers with the cell references or cell addresses to the cells where those numbers are located. So up here in the formula bar, I'm going to use the formula bar this time. I'm going to highlight the 93,500, delete that, and I'm going to replace that with the cell reference or cell address for the cell where the 93,500 was located. Now, it's in column C and it's in row 6. So that is cell C6. So if I type C6 in there, you can see that my text in the formula now changes to the color yellow and the cell is also highlighted in yellow to indicate that that's the cell I'm calculating. That's pretty handy. Now, if I didn't want to type the cell each time, there's also a shortcut you can do. So I'm going to delete the 95,000, and instead of typing in its cell reference, I'm just going to come down to where the cell is located and click on it. When I click on it, it will add the cell reference into my formula for me. And you can see that the text changed to a purple color and so did the highlighting on the cell. So now I can not only read the cell references, but visually I can see which cells I'm using for the calculation. That's very useful if you're a visual style learner. I can see that yellow, C6, minus purple, 
B6 is the formula that I have calculated. And if I hit enter, you can see that the number matches. It is still calculating even with the cell reference. Now the cool thing is, let's come up here and change the 93,000 back to the original 92,000. And now watch what happens to the cell D6 in the change column. When I hit un enter, the formula changes because I'm using the cell references. So in all of our assignments for Google Sheets, when you are asked to create a formula or function, do not use hard-coded numbers. We are always going to use cell references instead. That allows a stronger calculation and allows it to auto-update when things around it change. And that is the real power to using a spreadsheet instead of just a calculator. Now, the next thing we want to do is create a similar formula for every single one of the rows in this column. Now, I could go in and type these in again and just say equals this year minus last year, just like I did with the previous one. Hit enter and it will calculate for me and I can do that for every single row. Not too bad when you only have a handful of rows like we do today, but if you had thousands of rows, that could be really time consuming. So there is a feature in Google Sheets that can help us with that. It is called a drag fill. So if I come up and click on my first row again, there's this small box in the lower right corner of the active cell. So you've got that blue border and then the lower right corner of the blue border is a blue box. That box is a feature called a drag fill. A drag fill is basically a copy and paste that will paste anywhere you drag it. So if I grab this drag fill, you can see as soon as I put my mouse on top of it, it changes to a cross instead of a typical mouse. That indicates that you've grabbed the drag fill. If I click and hold that and then drag down, you see I get a dotted line that's telling me where this is going to drag. As soon as I release that, it is going to paste the same formula I had on the first row into all of the next rows. And because I use cell references, it's going to know that those cell references should move down a row as the formula moves down a row. That is called a relative cell reference. We'll talk more about those a little later. So that's a really fast and easy way to complete your uh, formulas. In this assignment today, you will have multiple columns that will need to be calculated, and each of them have lots of rows. If you can calculate just the first row and then drag fill them down, you will save a lot of time and complete this assignment on time. So I'm encouraging you to use all of these tools and features that speed up and make a spreadsheet efficient so that you can complete the assignment quickly. Now, let's take a look at the green cells. Any cells that have a fill color in green, instead of doing a formula like we did just now, I would like you to do a function. So let's talk about functions. A function is a code built into the formula that allows it to calculate lots of information or a complex calculation faster and easier for you. So let's imagine that we want to create a totals row that totals up everything in the rows above it. So here I want to total the budget for last year. I could do a formula here and press the equal sign and then do B6 plus B7 plus B8 plus B9 and just keep going all day long until I finally get to the bottom. Again, not too bad with a handful of cells, but when you have thousands of rows, that would take you all day. So instead, Excel has a special function that allows us to add lots of information together at the same time. This is called a sum function. So if you are familiar with the English terms in math, sum is the term for adding. So to create a function, what we need to do is press the equal sign, and then instead of clicking on cells and starting our math calculation, we're going to type the name of the function. So the name of the function we're going to use to add is sum, S-U-M. Once you've typed the function, you'll open a parenthesis, select a range of cells that we want to add together. So this box that pops up gives you a description of what the functions are, how they work, and some examples of what they look like. However, it's blocking my ability to grab my 
cells that I need to add together. So I'm going to close that. Then I can click and select my range. You could type a range in if you want to. Remember that our ranges are separated by colons. So I would pick my top left corner, B6, and then a colon, and then my bottom right corner, which would be, since we only have one column, B12. And you can see that it selects and highlights that range for me. So you can type them in, but I find there's an easier way to do that simply by clicking and dragging. So if I click on one of the cells, and then I hold my mouse down and drag, it will select the range for me and create the text. When you're finished selecting your range, you will close your parentheses by putting an opposite parenthesis on the far end, and then press Enter. And now, instead of having to do B6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12, I can just say equal sum, select the range, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. Now, if you don't want to type the formulas there, or the functions, there is another way that you can do it. On the ribbon, there is a function icon. It's located on the far right, right here. If I click on that, it gives me a list of all of the possible functions that we could be using with the basic functions at the very top. There are five basic functions that we use in Google Sheets. Those are sum, average, count, max, and min. In this case, let's say that we want to create another sum for this year's budget. Instead of typing it in this time, I'm going to go up to the functions bar and select the sum function. When I do that, it sets the equal sign, types it in, and creates the parentheses for me. All I have to do is drag the range. So much easier than typing it in. So I'm going to come back and click and drag on the range that I would like to add together and press enter, and it does all the work for me. So you're welcome to type them in if that's easier for you. You're welcome to use the function tool if you want to. That's there as well. But the green cells, I would like you to use these coded functions. If you use a formula here, they will be marked wrong. If you type in just a number in either the gray cells or the green cells, those will be marked wrong as well. Because the purpose of these is to calculate, not just type in an answer. So don't calculate it in a calculator and then just type an answer. Actually have Excel do the calculations for you. All right, now I want to show you one other handy feature. We talked about how we can use the drag fill in columns, but you can use the drag fill in rows as well. So if I come back to my first cell and grab that drag fill icon in the lower right corner, instead of dragging down, I'm going to drag to the right. And when I release my mouse, it's going to fill the functions across my row as well. So again, use that drag fill as much as you can to help you save time. Now, the blue cells are for us to analyze the information once we've calculated it. So each scenario that you're looking at today will have different questions that they will ask you based on the information that you're calculating. In this case, the manager has four questions. The first question is, which budget item had the greatest change? So as we're looking at these different uh, budget categories, which scenario, positive or negative, had a greater change from this year compared to the year before. And you can see that that would be salary. Salary has changed by $2,500. So I'm going to write the name of the category right here. And with the blue cells, you don't need to type in formulas or functions. That's not necessary. You can simply type in the answer. This is the only place on the spreadsheet where you will be typing answers in. Everywhere else, you'll be using formulas or functions. Now, it wants to know whether that was positive or negative. That was negative. What was the smallest change? Well, looking at these, the smallest change was $40. That's going to be subscriptions. So I'm going to type in subscriptions. And that one was a positive change because there are no parentheses around it. So just in a second, we could put together a quick function and formula to calculate the information that this manager needed to be able to make their decisions and understand the changes in their budgets quickly and easily. And now it's in a format that he could hand to his team or other people that may not understand the numbers very well to be able to read them and understand them better. The last thing I would like you to do on your spreadsheet, once you've finished the calculations and have analyzed the information and written your answers down in the blue cells, I would like you to show me the formulas that you've created so that I can review them when we grade. 
As we mentioned before, when you're looking at the cell itself, it only shows you the answers. In order to see the formulas, normally you have to click on the cell and look at the formula bar at the top. But there is an option in Google Sheets to allow you to see the functions and formulas that you've written right inside the cells. That is a feature called Show Formulas. Show Formulas is located in the View menu at the very top. So if I click on View and select Show Formulas, you can see that all of my cells change to show the formulas that were typed into them instead of the actual values. This is a handy tool to use when you're checking your own work before you turn it in to make sure that all of the cells have formulas or functions where they're supposed to and that you've completed them all correctly before you turn them in. When you turn in the assignment, I would like it turned in with the show formulas showing, even though my example in Canvas does not have that. This will simply make it easier for me to look at your formulas and your functions and make sure that you're doing them correctly. So now we've finished the first scenario, we're ready to work, move on to the second. There are actually four scenarios in this assignment, and each of them have their own worksheet. So remember that you can find the worksheets at the very bottom of the screen in individual tabs. This is the budget worksheet. There is also a worksheet called commissions, one called baseball, and one called payroll. So if you're taking this as part of my Canvas course, what I'd like you to do now is go back to Canvas and look at the instructions for each of the worksheets. Each worksheet has step-by-step -step instructions that will guide you through each formula and each function that you are required to create. It won't tell you how to do the calculations. It won't tell you what the formula should be. It won't tell you which function to use. Those are things that I would like you to try and do yourself. If you find that you are struggling to understand which formula or function to use in a specific scenario, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. So just a quick recap on the things we've learned today. In our video today, we've learned the difference between a formula and a function. A formula is a simple mathematical equation, and a function is a code that allows us to calculate more complex things easier. We've also learned how to create and set up a formula using the equal sign to tell Google Sheets that we are calculating. We also learned how to format a basic function. We learned that there were five different basic functions, sum, average, count, max, and min, and got introduced to each of those. To learn more tools and features in the Google Suite family of apps, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit torynorman.com.